Well, hello, guys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where we're going to be talking about some rumors and signings that happened in the last 24 hours. Uh, Minnesota Wild, little bit thing going on with Fiala. We're going to look in that. Uh, New Jersey Devils make a signing. And... The New York Islanders sign a player that they already have for what I think is quite the miraculous deal. So we're going to take a look at that as well. Uh, stick, stick by to the end where we do a little Perlo dance together and talk amongst ourselves. Uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. The steel, www.steelflyers.com. Uh, do you like the four major sports and some teams on those four major sports? Well, you'll enjoy the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, that's what we deal with. All four major sports, all teams, all the time, talking like I am now, doing writing, everything. We're getting more and more creators to take care of every team in every league eventually. We're looking for creators like that. If you're interested, if you have an interest, if that's something that you would enjoy doing and making a little money doing, let us know in the comment section there and maybe... Somewhere down the road, you might be able to do such a thing. Uh, yes, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Today is August 6th. Um, and I do a show from 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern, where we talk about many of the topics we're about to talk about right now, except we do it in an interactive setting. Yeah. We, you can go on there and tell me what you think. Tell me, talk, just talk about hockey. If you're a diehard, if you just love hockey and you know maybe a lot about hockey or want to know a lot about hockey because if you go on there you're going to hear a lot of things talked about from a lot of people who do uh, spend a lot of time thinking and talking about hockey a divorce worthy time as far as I'm concerned that's for sure uh so hope to see you there now let's get into some news and rumors of the day Ah, look at that. New Jersey Devils sign Thomas Tatar to a two-year deal, 3.75 for the first year, 5.25 million for the second, at an average of $4.5 million. Uh, he joins Hamilton, Bernier, uh, and Bernier uh, for to be the three signings of the year for them. I liked Hamilton, I like Bernie. This one, I like it, but it's a little confusing to me. Tatar seems to be a lot of what they already have. Um, there may be more going on here than that, but if you put Tatar here, this is uh, I'll go over to Cap Friendly, and you see you got Kalkanen, Jack Hughes. I think watch out for a breakout year for that fellow, my friends. Watch out for a breakout year. Igor Sharangovich, who they just signed up. For two years at $2 million. If you notice, Sharon Govich had 30 points in 54 games. Tatar, 30 points in 50 games. At, But he comes in at $4.5 million for two years. And Sharon Govich, uh, two, $4 million for two years. But $9 million for two years is what I'm trying to say. Sharon Govich has, makes less in two years than... Uh, than Tatar makes in one. Now, Sharon Govich was new to the league last year, but still. Um, then you got Pavel Zaka, Heischer, and here they have Brat. I'm pretty sure you're going to have to play Tatar there. Uh, I don't think they signed Tatar to play him on the third line. He's, he's, he's okay defensively, but I wouldn't really put him in a defensive role. I'm pretty sure they're getting put, grabbing him to score more goals, which they had a problem doing last year. Goals were the or a bit of an issue, uh, having a shooter. But I think the defensively it was more of a problem. Uh, I don't think they're they're. I think they still have a lot of scoring in this lineup. They're all young. They're growing. They're learning how to score. So they bring in somebody like Tatar, who might I suppose be able to help these young players with their scoring potential. Like for instance, Jesper Bratt, who um, does put up a lot of points, but forgets to shoot a lot, and maybe Tatar will be able to help him in that area. Uh, he's been a fairly consistent scorer in his career, Tatar. 
Uh, I think this is six. Uh, how many? Six straight years that he scored 20 goals or more. Something like that. Yeah, that was 20. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it would have been six if they didn't have the shortened season. So very consistent score. Maybe you'll be able to help those young players. And I guess now thinking about it, that's probably the heart of the reason why they got Tatar there. It just seems like they have a lot of the same kind of player like that, but I don't mind the signing at all. Uh, very interesting. It wasn't the place I thought Tatar was going to go, but I wasn't sure where he was going to go. <clears throat> I couldn't put a place for him, but now we know. It's New Jersey. That's where he goes. Next one. Whoa. Look at this. Look at that handsome dude. That is Mr. Kevin Fiala right there. Uh, Kevin Fiala is has been for quite some time now been in trade rumors as uh, Mr. Parsons from the Hockey Writers points out. Uh, the Athletics' Michael Russo who uh, has come up with uh, or has reported, and Michael Russo does some pretty good reporting over there for The Athletic. Uh, subscription required, but it's well worth it. I would get a subscription to The Athletic if you, can, if you have, the little, have the scratch to do it and you're a huge hockey fan like me. Uh, on where was the organization that elected to go to arbitration and not the player? So it, the organization had elected, Minnesota decided to go to uh, arbitration, not the player. There's back and forth going between both sides. Usually when an organization wants to go to arbitration, it's simply because they are having difficult time with talks and they want a little extra time to do it. Now, he has been in trade talks and uh, with, the Buffalo Sabres, apparently the Buffalo Sabres in Eichel Talks had mentioned, had put Fiala's name out there as someone that they would want in return for Eichel. Now, where would the other rumors be coming from? Well, let's go look at Minnesota here for a second. Um, first of all, this is uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Fiala's numbers. Uh, 54 in 1920 at 54 points. 2021, 40 points in 50 games. Good numbers after coming over from Nashville. Um, really improved his game a lot. Uh, probably feeling a little slighted here that he's not able to pull off uh, his contract in a faster fashion since he has done very well for the team. Now, the problem they have here is they have, what, $19 million cap space. Now, we know that they bought out Suter and Parise, right? I hope you know that. They bought out Suter and Parise, uh, making their next three years very difficult cap-wise. Yes, they have $19 million this year, but those caps, that, that cap, uh, look at this. It's going to be $12 million on their cap next year. It's only Four, five million this year, over twelve million next, and then two years of fourteen million dollars dead cap. So it's kind of difficult when you have Kirill Kaprizov. And by the way, I've heard numbers in the thirteen point five million per year uh, area for Kaprizov. And Kaprizov has all the uh, leverage in the world to do that because all he has to do is go to the KHL. Regardless, even if it's a more sensible $10, $11 million a year for eight years, Kevin Fiala is going to have a hard time getting a decent contract out of Minnesota because of that. And I definitely could see a trade. Now, where could a trade happen, you ask? Thanks for asking. That was a very good question. Uh, I say the Anaheim Ducks. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I think the Anaheim Ducks would be very bullish on someone like Fiala, who is still fairly young, um, 25 years old. He's very young. Uh, they are kind. Of, they are, of course, have been rebuilding for quite a while, but I'm sure would like to kind of boost that process a little bit here. They're not in a market where 
rebuilding for the next decade is something that is they want to do. They, they need this to go a little quicker. And I could see them <clears throat> ponying up the money for Fiala in the six to seven million dollars a year mark for a lot of years to be able to pull a guy out who has 30 some goal potential. This team needs goals and they need them bad. I could see a Troy Terry, uh, Jacob Larson, and second round pick and a prospect or something like that. Maybe not even that much because they're going to have to sign him right away. Now, uh, the question, what, what the return will be will have a lot to do with how much he's willing to say, I'm going to sign with you. So as of, as of right now, they'd only have him for two years. So it might end up being Tor- Tory Terry, Larson, and a pick. And uh, that in that way, they wouldn't, uh, Minnesota would, would get a couple of players that would fit with a lesser cap. Uh, Troy Terry is one and a half million. Larson's 1.2. So they get to fill out some roster spots with less money than it would to sign Fiala. I could see that deal happening. Um, it, we'll have to see, but I think it's pretty likely that Fiala will have to go out of Minnesota. Tell me what you think there in the comment section. Do you think Fiala, Minnesota should sign him up? maybe lose somebody else instead, uh, that's a possibility. Or do you think as well that they should trade him and maybe this Anaheim trade would be good for you or maybe you've got somewhere else that he may be better off going to. Um, remember, though, while putting your trade down there, and I want you to put your trade down there in the comment section, remember that they're, pro- uh, they're not going to want cap space back. So looking for players that already have a fairly big salary is probably not going to be what they're looking for. New York Islanders <clears throat> have just done something, as far as I'm concerned, pretty amazing. Uh, they have signed Adam Pellich to a 5.75 million eight-year contract for a 26-year-old stud of a defenseman. Did I say that loud enough or strongly enough? Stud! Is that better? Okay. Stud of a defenseman. The guy is big. He is uh, one of the best shutdown defensemen in the league, bar none, I would say. His his contribution in the playoffs last year will go down like I'm ser- like legendary. What I the things you heard about the coaches and the people, the players that played with him, and just watching them, like nothing gets past this dude, man. Yeah. He doesn't have the greatest offensive numbers, no doubt about it. But there are just some players that don't do both of those things. And actually, most players don't. If he had the offense of, say, like a Hamilton or like a Hedman, then he'd be getting that kind of money. Like right now, those kind of players would be in the $12, $13, $12 million range, something like that. you got to remember, every year, the amount players get is more and more. At least 10 and for a stud top pairing defenseman at five point seven five million, midway through this deal, when this guy's twenty nine or thirty years old, people are going to be like, "Are you kidding me? That's all he's making? That is sick." As long as he doesn't get injured or anything like that. I don't know, dude, Mister Pellich. I know you probably wanted to stay an Islander, but I would like really have a deep talk with your agent there buddy you could have held out for probably he could have Pellet could at least held out for seven million here and been well in his rights to do so i think lamorello did fantastic job signing this contract um now they go now they go and look at uh palmieri and zajac maybe and uh they've been in the tarasenko talks the New York Islanders, which I talked about in a previous video, you might want to take a look at. Uh, they they have been in apparently in the Tarasenko talks, and now they just got a little more money to be able to do something like that. Because I'll tell you right now, when I was going through what the Islanders had to do in the off season, I did not see less than six for Adam Pellick. I saw a lot more than that. So tell me what you think. Do you think that was well worth the con? I, I don't know. Am I going to get slammed here? 
Do you guys think that it's possible that Adam Pellick didn't deserve that? He, he deserved more? Give me your reasons why. Uh, I could be off here. This is the other thing here. Uh, we, uh, we, I, I love hearing your comments. Don't think that just don't, if you're going to put down there, I may disagree with you or not. It doesn't mean I'm right. Um, that's the whole point. That's what I love about hockey. And then later on, you're going to find out, hey, see, I told you, Pelic is garbage. Blah, 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 blah. Do that. Do that. Point out that you're right. This is what hockey is all about, man. Right? Going out there. I, 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 I talk in hockey anyways. Trying to see, hey, who's right? Who's wrong? Who got it? Shoved in my face. I like it. Okay. That's my full 42 for today for that. However... I'll tell you what's happening right now in uh, Perlo land. We are now just starting to bring in the engine components for our Jet O'Frolic. And we're needing a Jet O'Frolic driver. So if you, I, I know there's lots of you out there, but um, send in your resume to uh, the Perlo Wisdom Show. And uh, I will look, I'll peruse through them, your experience and all of that sort of thing for the uh, Jetto Frolic, because we're looking, we're looking for a Jetto Frolic driver. If, and subscribe, hit the bell, of course. I'll send you a Pearls of Wisdom necklace. Signed, this one is signed by Peyton on the radio. The prize, Peyton on the radio. Yeah, go check out his channel if you haven't. I don't know why you wouldn't. Everybody in the land has. By the way, thank you, Mr. Lamorello, for uh, uh, your kind words on helping with the uh, salary of Pellich. You did a fine job, sir. Um, anyways, I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, helicopter, Perlocopter to your door. We already have drivers for those. We have Melissa and Hernandez who will take them out to you, bring you to the land. And I've got some community pearls that have been ground up this fresh this morning, fresh, fresh for you. These are mauve, mauve pearls. They're good for uh, if you got headaches, for like uh, arthritis and all of those. Just pour them into your bath. Just let them soak. Here you go. You, you can see me that whole time. Now you can. Here I go. I'm going to send you a Pearls of Wisdom necklace right... Or sorry. No, I'm not. I'm sending you pearls. Mauve pearls. Now, a lot of people ask me, do you have to go... When you send out the pearls? And the answer is yes. Yes, you do. So if you, if you have some pearls of your own, if you want to take those and send them out, practice with me, okay? Here we go. Ready? Jacket, turn around, sit, straight, CL, oh, CL, okay, ready? It's Bill, no, 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 you got to go first, not, ah, uh, you got to go, ah, eh, getting better. You just practice at home for a while. We'll see you next time here at Pearls of Wisdom Industries. Okay, bye.